Um, we're going to be looking at the universe and Cole, I can't change the values that are in the universe. They're not all nice, round, nice, tiny numbers. Often they're really, really big, certainly in physics 12 in the gravitation unit. When we look at the mass of the Earth, it's big. The mass of the sun, it's big. Or they're really, really, really tiny. Uh, also in physics 12, when we look at the charge on an electron, it's 0.000000000000000000016. You don't want to write that out all the time. Uh, so we use scientific notation. Uh, this year I'll do a review. Next year in Physics 12, we kind of hope you've remembered it. So during this course, we're going to use models, often mathematical, to help us understand a particular set of phenomena. Nick, I have to emphasize here, there, uh, here, there. I have to emphasize here, most of the models that I teach you are going to be wrong. 90% of what I teach you, Misha, is going to be accurate to a point. It's going to be okay as long as we don't go too far down the rabbit hole. So, uh, Christy, I'll often ignore friction, for example, when we get to forces, because that makes the math yucky. Or we'll ignore air resistance when we're doing projectiles, because that makes the math yucky. Once in a while, we would bang on accurate, but really, if you want to understand all of physics, you can probably get away with just two theories. The theory of general relativity, which explains everything that's really big and is heavy-duty math, and quantum theory, which explains everything that's really, really small and is heavy-duty math. But we're not going to go in either of those directions. We're going to stay on a surface level. So I, full disclosure, much of the time you're going to hear me say something like we're in our magic physics world where all the math works nice, but we're having to ignore this or we're having to fudge that. Okay? However, since most of our models are going to be mathematical, good math skills are, well, I wrote a must. They are a big help. If you're someone who struggles with math, and I know a few of you have told me that you're coming out of the 10 applications and workplace stream, usually those kids tell me by the end of the year that they've gotten much better at math because physics is applied math, but you can visualize it. It's not so abstract. If you're someone who is good at math, you'll learn that mathematics is the language of the universe. So we're going to start off with scientific notation. What are the rules for a number that is correctly written in scientific notation? Well, number one, there can only be one single digit to the left of the decimal. So 12.3 times 10 to the fourth is or is not in scientific notation. OK? Well, it's got a 10 to the fourth, Mr. It's got a 10 to the, yeah, most scientific notation numbers have a 10 to the, but the rule is single digit, then the decimal. If I wanted to write this in scientific notation, it would be 1.23 times 10 to the, to the what? Five, it turns out. And we'll practice this. How do you write a number in scientific notation? You count the number of decimal places the point moves. And even to this day, whether it's on my calculator or on a piece of paper, I still take my pencil and physically count. I'm not good at just glancing and seeing how many spots. Too often I'm out by one. I suck at it. So this is one time where I do it the slow and steady way. If the decimal point moves to the left, left is that way for some of you that have trouble with the left and rights. The power of 10 will be positive. Abbreviation time. I tend to abbreviate. We're going to write the word positive and negative fairly often. I'm going to abbreviate them. I don't want to abbreviate it just with that because to me as a math guy, when I see a plus sign, I go looking for the rest of the equation. And I want an abbreviation for the word positive. So what I made up years ago, my abbreviation for the word positive is a plus sign with a VE next to it. That's positive. That's my abbreviation. Come up with your own. You know what my abbreviation for the word negative is? Minus sign with a V in. OK? If the decimal point moves to the right, that's that way, the power of 10 will be negative. So for example, if I'm talking about an electron having a negative charge, you'll see in my notes minus VE for negative charge because it means the word negative as a charge. It doesn't mean subtract. If I wanted you to mean subtract, I would just write a minus sign with no VE. Works for me, Emma, Emma, whatever works for you. It's very important that you learn how your calculator handles scientific notation because each brand of calculator has a slightly different method. And you don't want to do it the long way. So rewrite the following in scientific notation. 
example one. The Earth weighs five, nine, eight, and a bunch of zeros kilograms, which it does. How did we figure that out, Mr. Duick? Did we put the mass of the Earth on a scale? Uh, we'll actually calculate it in physics 12. How would you write this in scientific notation? Well, starting reading from the left-hand side, it's always going to be the first non-zero digit, decimal point, and then any more non-zero digits. times 10 to the, I count. Typically what I'll do if it's like, if I'm writing, is I'll even put the decimal there where it was originally, and then I, I've got 24? It's 24. I know it's 24 because I've actually memorized the mass of the Earth because, you know, nerd. Now that's a nice time saver because writing out all those zeros all the time, Dylan would drive us crazy. And that's really scientific notation. I use it when the numbers are really big. I use it when the numbers are really small. If the numbers are in betweenish, if they insist I write it in scientific notation, I will. But otherwise, like 510, I would write 510, not 5.1 times 10 to the 2, unless the answer insisted that I did that. One proton has a charge of that many coulombs. Again, David, same idea. I start reading this way. The first non-zero digit, decimal 6. And then it's going to be times 10 to the... Here, we're writing a small number. We're moving the decimal to the right, so it's going to be a negative exponent because technically you're dividing by 10. Negative what? Someone count. 19. It's negative 19. And charge is measured in coulombs. The temperature of the sun is 15 million kelvins. What? 15 million kelvins. What? 15 million kelvins. My first name is a science unit. You know. Okay. Uh, here, if they get, once in a while, you'll get a word written out in English. So I would start out by writing it out in math, 15 million. Um, what number is that? 15 what? Thousand. What number is that? 15 what? Oh, there, that's 15 million. There, I've written it out. I add enough zeros. To and now I'll convert that. It's going to be 1.5 times 10 to the. I find it easier if there are commas. I think this one would have been a little easier than decimals, but we don't put commas in decimals. So 10 to the, sorry, not sixth. Let's see. The decimal point right now is there. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's going to end up between the 1 and the 5. It's going to move how many spots, Emma? Sesame Street is brought to you today by the number 7. And then it would be degrees Kelvin. You should also be able to go from scientific notation to standard form. Usually you won't bother because usually if you're in scientific notation, Emily, in the first place, it's because the number was so big or so small, you just don't feel like writing out all the zeros. But for numbers that are in betweenish, ish okay. Rewrite in standard form 5.4 times 10 to the negative 7. Sierra times 10 to the what? Not times, negative. That's going to totally change because if 10 to the 7th, I'd be thinking I'm moving the decimal point over adding zeros. Here, I'm adding zeros after the decimal. Zero point. 10 to the negative what? One more time. 10 to the negative what? Here's how you do it. You're going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five, six. The seventh digit is going to be the five. And then the four. If you do it that way, you're going to find, Jacqueline, that that has moved it. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's actually moved it seven spots over. Writing a bigger number in standard notation is very similar, but count carefully. OK. So we're going to write down a procedure for entering a number in scientific notation in your calculator below. And this is going to take a while because all of your calculators are different. Can you all look up? Here is what no one is going to type. Let me say this again. This is important. Here is what no one is going to type. No one is going to type 6.23 and then hit their times button, type 10, hit their exponent button, and then go negative 5. If you do that, you're going to end up with errors because your calculator will not know that this 10 to the is attached to that 6.23. And you're going to end up with weird stuff happening when you didn't anticipate it. Instead, what you want to use is your scientific notation button. So what is your scientific notation button? You ready? For some of you, Casios and Sharps, it may be an EXP button. If it's an EXP button, typically it's right above the 7 or in the bottom row in the middle. For some of you, it will be a 10 to the, uh, uh, something like that, times 10 to the exponent button. If it's that button, it's typically above the 7 or bottom row middle. Who has TIs, Texas Instrument Calculators? For you folks, it's typically an E, E button. On yours, Emily, it appears, I'll show you on mine, it's the shift comma, second function comma. Uh, on yours, I think it's also second function comma. Uh, and here's how all of you are going to type it. So you're going to go 6.23. Enter that into your calculator, please. You're not going to type times. You're not going to type a 10. You're going to just hit your scientific notation button, whatever it's called on yours. And I'm going to come around and help you in a second. Negative 5. And now if you hit equals, that will store that number into your calculator. So for me, 623 Scientific notation, negative 5. And mine just repeats the number back because it's so small, my calculator defaults to scientific notation. So this is your chance to raise your hand. I'm going to pause the video. So next page, performing calculations. There is going to be, Cole, a big difference between how we type or handwrite math and how we enter math into our calculator. And the big issue is most of your calculators only have a single line display. Who has a calculator that when they hit divided by or use the fraction button, it actually shows two lines. It's got a big display. If you have that, you can probably type things exactly as they appear on my screen. Very few of you will have that. Even the graphing calculators don't. So I'm going to be very meticulous in how we get good at typing things in. I want to teach you how to make your calculator sing. I want to teach you how to make your calculator shine. But you got to have some patience here. So you ready? I'm going to pick on Nick. Nick, looking at number one. Here's the first thing that's meant to be really obvious. Is this a fraction? Say yes. Yeah. yeah. Fraction also means divided by, but bare basics. Is this a fraction? Say yes. Is there more than one thing on the top? Yeah. I want to put the top in one big uber bracket. Is there more than one thing on the bottom? I want to put the bottom in one big uber bracket. I, however, do not want to type zillions of brackets. When I'm handwriting, don't write this down. That's fairly easy to understand. That's 5 times 4 times 3 times 5. If you typed that into your calculator, you would be overwhelmed by brackets. When I'm writing into my calculator, I will never show multiplication with brackets. I'll always put a time sign in there. That's just easier to see in the font size on your calculator. So all of you have your calculators out. We're going to type this together. I'm going to clear my screen. If you can, great. If you don't need to, that's fine. Nick, is this a fraction? Is there more than one thing on the top? 
First thing I'm gonna do is open up a bracket. Now you need to find where your bracket key is. Some of you, when you hit that bracket key, it'll display a bracket. Some of you have a cheaper POS calculator, the screen flashes maybe, or it might even so show you a symbol somewhere. You'll have to track the brackets yourself, which is one more reason why I say it's worth spending the extra cash and getting a better calculator. Mateo, not Mateo. Mateo, can you read to me the first number? And that's how I'm going to say it out loud. And how am I going to type it? One decimal eight scientific notation button, whatever button yours was when I just came around. For me, it's right there. Mine puts a little E. Yours might put a times 10 to the. Yours might put a couple of small digits, whatever. Negative what? Don't close the bracket off because we haven't finished the top. What do two brackets side by side mean as a mathematical operation? Adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? It's much easier to put a times there. It's less typing and it's clearer. See, if you close the bracket off, now you just told your calculator to close the top off and it won't know where the rest of the top and bottom are. So even though I will handwrite, sorry, I will type and handwrite brackets, not on my calculator. David, what's the next term in the next bracket? Read it to me, please. 10 to the? And that's how you'll read it out loud. That's how I'll think it out loud. How will I type it? 2.6, I will not hit times. I will not hit 10 to the scientific notation button that has all of that built in. What was the exponent? Well, the, just the exponent, five. Nick. Have we reached the end of the top? Yeah. Close off the top. What does, a what does a fraction mean? I just gave the punchline away, Sierra. What does a fraction mean? So I hit on my calculator divided by, it actually does a slash. Some of you, if you play around with your fraction button, and I'll help you do that later on, you might actually have a complete top and bottom on your calculator. If you bought a half decent one, that's fine. But most of us, we have now moved to the bottom by hitting divided by. Nick, is there more than one thing on the bottom? Yeah. Open up a bracket. Christian, what's the first term in the bottom? How will I type that? 9, I won't hit times, I won't hit 10, I won't hit to the power of, I hit my scientific notation button, 8. And right now, most of your screens are looking different from mine, unless yours also has the capital E for scientific notation abbreviation. And Hannah, what do two brackets side by side mean? Adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? I'm going to go times like that. Oh, mine also uses an asterisk. But the reason mine does all this, this is actually a handheld computer, and so it's using computer keys, like from your standard keyboard. There is no times key, but there's a shift eight asterisk is the standard multiplication key. Uh, the next term, Brian. Can you read it out to me? The whole thing, please. The whole thing. Yeah. 1.3. Scientific notation button. You could just say times 10 to the, and I'll know exactly what you mean. This is where all of us were customized our calculators. Negative one. Have we reached the bottom? Yeah. Close off the bottom bracket. If you've done that, you should get maybe that. Mine gave it to me in scientific notation. I read this as four times 10 to the negative six. Geo, yours might display it as 0. 0.000004. Okay, because it's right, I, did, I picked these on purpose. They're right on the threshold of different models of calculators showing an answer in scientific notation or showing an answer as a decimal. If you didn't get that, now is the time to raise your hand and call me over. So, I got this. Don't write this down. I won't accept that. That's, that's not what it's saying. I would accept this. 4, and then I know my calculator, that E means times 10 to the negative 6, or I would accept point zero two three four five six. I would accept either of those. Which one is less writing? I'd go scientific notation on this. Now, if it was a 10 to the negative 3, it's probably less writing to write point zero zero four. I'd probably go with, I, typically I'd go with whatever's less writing. I'm lazy.
Ready? Next one. Uh, same questions. Mike, is this a fraction? Is there more than one thing on the top? Is there more than one thing on the bottom? I'm going to put a big bracket around the top and then hit divided by. I'm going to put a big bracket around the bottom, hit divided by. Here in the middle, rather than brackets, I'm going to put times signs. Oops. And I'm going to have to figure out where my exponent button is down there, I think. Let's see. Clear. Bracket 5.8, scientific notation button 3, times 2.67. Scientific notation button, 21. I've got to the end of the top, close off the top. Is this a fraction? Divided by. More than one thing on the bottom, open up a bracket. Negative sign. Now, on all of your calculators, look up. That's a negative. That's a subtraction. They'll look different, and if you're getting a syntax error, and when you backspace, it puts you over a minus sign or a negative. Probably you hit subtract when you meant negative, or you hit negative when you meant subtract. And you need to make sure you got the correct one. So I'm going to delete this one. I want a negative. 9.24, scientific notation button, negative 3 to the fifth. I need my exponent button. My exponent button is a little hat thingy, like that. You need to figure out where your to the power of button is. Now, some of your calculators, it'll be an x to the y button. Some of your calculators, it'll be a little button like that. Some of your calculators, it'll be a y to the x button. I'm going to pause. This is your chance to figure out where that thing is. Before I do come around, I'll give you the final answer. It's going to be times 1.3 scientific notation button negative 1. Final answer should end up being negative 1.76. Why negative, Mr. Duick? Oh, yeah, there is a negative. It's positive divided by negative. Negative 1.76862617 times, times 10 to the positive 36. Let me come around and help. Pause. So I got negative. I'm going to go to five decimal places for now. We'll talk about science you rounding off next lesson. Negative 1.76. 7686, I'll go to four decimal places. Negative 1.7686, blah, 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 times 10 to the 36. Okay? This is your chance to figure out how your calculator works and also how you interpret your calculator's answers. I have a couple of things for you to work on. So the first, these questions here. I did not attach the answers, but I'll go over them next class or I'll post them online on my website, pitmath.com. And then I have a nerdy.